Hey people all over the world, good evening boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen. Excuse me. It's your guy again, DLG Repping. Pardon me again. Yes, um, we've got some things to talk about. I'm going to start off with... Um, a bit of um, football news first, and that is um, Liverpool. As it's been reported, they've done a U-turn on um, furlong, furloughing um, their staff because it was said earlier that um, their owners wanted um, the taxpayers to help um, pay their non-playing staff their wages, which I completely disagree with. It's totally disrespectful and despicable of them but I've learned in the last few minutes that they want to do a U-turn and uh, if that's true then yeah well done well done to um, Liverpool's owners you know they should they should um, fund them um, the non-playing staff's um, wages until um the near foreseeable future when football does really return because being a steward, I should know, the money's the money's okay-ish, but it's not a daily job. It's just pay as you, well, it just pay as you work, innit? You just work a shift where whenever Liverpool are at home or whenever the home team's at home, that's, well, every two weeks or, or every other week or every other two weeks, sometimes every other three weeks, you know? So well done to... um. The two owners. One of them is um, John F. Kennedy. Or John W. Kennedy, I think. <laughs> One of the two. Well done to you, mate. And um, you get praising where praising is due. Um, another thing I would like to talk about. Um, yeah, it's um pandemic out there. It's just... Talk about the police and this... Um, the... Um, the crisis that we call the coronavirus. I feel that there should be a lot more police on our streets. Where I live, I don't really feel that there's police around. Maybe undercovers there, but I don't feel they're, they're about either. So um, that's another... Yeah, that's another um, topic, um, subject I want to talk about. Yeah, and that's, a, that's the lack of um, police because... You go out to the streets, the parks, you see people gathering in twos, threes, sixes and sevens and eights. And not enough has been done. And they're the same minority. It is the same minority that are trying to spoil it for everyone else. You know, not only they're out risking their lives, but they're risking other people's lives. You know, and they're not doing their part to protect their NHS, which means the staff in the NHS are... Risking their lives to save their lives, you know. I mean, I've learnt today that um, another four hundred and three people have died from this coronavirus, bringing the UK grand total to five thousand three hundred and seventy-three in the UK alone. In Northern Ireland, seventy people have now passed away. 70, a subtotal of 70. In Wales, there's over 100 plus. Same with Scotland. And England's got f over 3,000, nearly 4,000 that have passed away. I think it's 4,897. I could be wrong there. But um, <clears throat> if you want to correct me, then um, yeah, pl please feel free to do so. Drop your comments below. And as I say that, yeah, drive the thumbs up, like button. And please, guys, please, guys, subscribe, yeah? All I need is another 988 subscribers. And then I can go on to streaming for you guys, yeah? So, yeah, please, guys, subscribe. Not just in my manner. I'm talking about all manners around the world. If you're watching this video, please subscribe, yeah? Right, I'm going to go on to a little story 
of why did I decide to support Arsenal? What made me decide to support Arsenal? Well, as a kid growing up in the South East London, I took an interest in football. Just watching it on the TV, which I've always enjoyed watching it on the TV until recently. Uh, I went to, I'll go back to 91, I went to um, a summer soccer school at Arsenal, out just outside of Arsenal Football Club. But it's in the centre, behind Highbury, behind the North Bank. And um, having having Eddie McGoldrick and Paul Davies do drills, they were very uplifting. And, you know, speaking to Paul Davies alone, kind man, a pure gentleman. And he's thy perfect role model. You know? And he always had a smile on his face. Remember that as a youngster. So, yeah. But the main three that inspired me to support Arsenal more was Ian Wright, Paul Merson and Tony Adams. I'm going to start off with Paul Merson. This is a footballer off the field that he had gambling and drug issues. Yeah? He spent... X amount of money on his gambling issues. But on the pitch, he was a genius. And the biggest respect for him was is when the day comes when he when he fought and beat the battle of the drink and the drugs. And he, he just progressed as a player. He went on to win league titles, helped us win the Cup Winners Cup in 94. He was one of my heroes growing up, one of my idol idolise. He's one of the guys I idolised when I, grew, when, I, when, I, when, I, when I was growing up in school. You know? He inspired me to support this um, great club called Arsenal in Highbury doing his things. One of the best goals I've ever seen him score was um, a game at Highbury we were two one down at Leeds. Paul Mercer's on the uh, on the left. He's flying on the left, jinking past the defender, cuts inside, and unleashes a twenty five yarder, unstoppable top corner. Genius. He deserved to be capped for England on a number of times, on a numerous occasion. You know, he had the potential to be world class at what what he did because. He was that guy, and that's why they call him the Magic Man. Paul Merson, for me, hands down, he was a top, top player. <sighs> Tony Adams. For me, to go to jail for drink driving as a professional footballer and to come back mentally and physically stronger than you were the first time, that takes a lot of courage because he came back into the first team and there were doubts whether he was going to be the, the, the promising defender that he would be. Mr. Arsenal, you know? Nobody thought he was um, going to be that England international and go on to um, achieve his caps and go on to achieve caps he did, go on to become an Arsenal legend and Mr. Arsenal he did. Some of the tackles I remember. One of the tackles I remember was um, in a, in a match against Dinamo Kiev at Wembley. The um, yeah, the great Sergei Rebrov and Andrei Shevchenko. He was the greater of the two strikers, and he was there was a there was a opportunity where Shevchenko thought he was through on goal, and then Tony Adams goes in with a sliding tackle on the left foot, leg underneath the ball. Stopping um, Shevchenko in his grasps, and the act and Shev Shev and Shevchenko at the time was at his one of his best, and he was going to be moving on from Dinamo Kiev to a, to greater things like AC Milan, and the rest is history. But he put in a great tackle on him and stopped him in his grasp because watching him, he was causing our defense a hell of problems. 
and our defence was known as to be known as the back four that attackers never wanted to play against. <laughs> and how much I would, how much flesh I would give for, to a Teta to make that back four what it is, what it would, what it could be in the foreseeable future. But there you go. That's Tony Adams for me to a T. And you led by example. As a captain, he led by example. He was the most vocal in that dressing room. He, he saw that as the most vocal on the pitch and maybe the most vocal in the dressing room. And um, he was always favourites to win headers against most strikers in the Premier League. He wasn't the quickest, but he read the game magnificently. Magnificently. So Tony Adams, take a bow. Whether you're watching this or not, yeah, take a bow. Uh, you were another idol and you inspired me to play um, as a centre-half whenever I play football. That's a position I like the best. I enjoy it. As soon as I knew that I could um, cope as a centre-half, I thought, wow. It's because of you. I enjoyed my time playing football as a centre-half and that's my position. That's my main position because of you, Tony Adams. Thank you so much for being inspiring. Number three, Ian Wright. Now, this is a guy who grew up with David Rowcastle. God bless his soul. He's, he's, he's up there looking upon all of us on earth, especially us Arsenal fans. You know, still smiling and still got a blossoming personality by the looks of it. And he bled Arsenal, Roe Castle. And that's the guy that Ian Wright grew up with. Ian Wright, you know, he's he inspired, I think he's inspired quite a lot of um, people, young people who feel that football is only their plan A, not a plan B. But Ian Wright kept going and he didn't make it into, he didn't break through and make it to, as a professional footballer. He turned professional, yeah, should I say, he turned professional at 21 years of age. Ian Wright, that is. Could you believe it? Ian Wright turned professional at 21. And he should have had the winning goal against Man United. He came on as a substitute. My early memories of him. Man United v Crystal Palace, you know. They were 2-1 down and Ian Wright come on and bagged in a brace. 3-2 Crystal Palace and they were maybe this close away from winning the FA Cup. Yeah, they were this close. And then I think Mark Hughes had other ideas. Shame, really. But other than that, Ian, Ian Wright was just an idolizer, you know. He had his problems off the field. There was a cute. There was rumours going around him cheating on his wife, having an affair. But on the pitch, it mattered to me what he could do. He was an out and out born goal scorer. The goals that he scored were classy. I would have loved to have watched him live, along with Adams and Merson. I would love to. I've loved to have watched all three of them live. You know, but Ian Wright, for me, it would have been a treat to watch him live. His goals he scored, his enthusiasm, and he led by the front, not by closing, not, not just by closing the ball down, but how vocal he was and how direct he was with his teammates. And when he played um, alongside Bergkamp, in front of Bergkamp as a number nine, it was a partnership worth um, cherishing every moment. And even now, Ian Wright, he even appears on Arsenal Fan TV occasionally. He doesn't mind being interviewed. Him and Kevin Campbell, their partnership was fantastic to see. And um, yeah, I want to talk about Kevin Campbell because he's, he's a fan just like me. Just like every Arsenal supporter in the world, every man, woman, youth or child who supports Arsenal around the world, he's, a, he's still a fan 
and he works for the AFTV and his friendship with Lee Judges is just, ah, oh, A1. And um, yeah, shout out to yourself, Lee Judges. And shout out to you, Kevin Campbell. Great work with your show and long may it continue. Well, that is um, my my um, channel. I'm going to sum it up here. Yeah, as I stress, stay at home, save lives and protect the NHS, yeah? We can all do our part here. Thank you to the majority of sensible people for doing their part. Well done to you guys, yeah? Every man, woman, youth and child in the country or in the UK, you've done your part. So I'll shout you out, yeah? I don't know you who you are, but you can introduce yourself to me by dropping your name, if not not number, but dropping your name in the comment section below and and um, talking about what I've um, discussed. You know, earlier I spoke about Liverpool's um, U-turn and um, it seems like that U-turn will put the fans on song with you guys, you owners. So well done to you, Liverpool. Massive well done and a massive um, shout out to you guys, yeah? You get shouted out when you do good. And I'll tell you, being an Arsenal fan, had Kroenke did that, I wouldn't be too surprised. In fact, most Arsenal fans will be even more angrier. And why not? Because Stan Kroenke... <laughs> the things I want to say about you, the things I want to call you, but I'm afraid I might have my YouTube channel shut down. Yeah, I admit it. My YouTube channel will be shut down if I said what I really think of you. I just want you to get the hell out of our club. You know? Who knows what you could do next? You know? From over 10 years ago, you bought shares of Lady Nina Bracewell-Smith. I don't, and I don't even know what she was thinking. I don't know what she saw in you as a business person. But there you go. <sighs> Who knows? But ending this, ending this on the positive, yeah. Um, yeah, well done to the majority that um, stay at home, that are adhering to the governor's, the government's advice. And um, yes, um, Boris Johnson... He's still in hospital, but he's making um, progress. So well done to him. Get well soon. However, even though you're getting well soon, your position of your position of power as the leader of this country comes into question. But the main thing is get well soon. And let's just hope that um, we can um, end this um, crisis and defeat it sooner rather than later and we can carry on with our daily lives because I know I would like to carry on with my daily life don't you guys anyway I'm summing this up here your guy DLG repping I'm out of here yeah peace bless and love don't forget to smash the thumbs up like button drop your comments below and please do subscribe yeah right later